I wish I could tell you how my friends and I were sucked into the excruciating pain and darkness that this game was. I wish I could tell you that we were tricked by a higher power and were now living through a curse not able to free ourselves. But that wouldn't be entirely true. We wanted this. We wanted to join the sickness because it promised us a reward we couldn't say no to. I made the conscious decision that I would be a damn part of this and now I can't stop. And neither can my friends. Not until it's over. When you start the game, when you're a part of it, there's no going back. And not knowing the rules could cost you your life. So if you ever get sucked into a game called Smile, maybe my advice could save you a limb or two. But be aware, I'm still figuring things out myself. Let me tell you about Smile. This all started when my friend Haley got kicked out of med school. Becoming a doctor had been her dream ever since she was a kid, and having that taken away from her hands just must have been heartbreaking. Ultimately, it also opened up her schedule for the upcoming madness. Haley and Lucas were my best friends, and while we did have a past full of peculiar occurrences that led us to mistrust each other on one occasion or another, we had become closer than I'd ever been to anyone, including my family. And so, of course, the three of us were there together to help Haley numb the pain of a future lost. I had invited them to my apartment, a small but cozy place I scored on the ground floor of a flat building. We were sitting in front of the TV watching silly cartoons when I read the email. Smile. It wasn't the first time I had gotten the weird mail saying nothing but the word smile. It had been happening for the last few days, but thinking this was nothing but spam, I ignored them. The email address was just a combination of numbers, the typical scam kind. 5252181131 at smile.com The emails were easy to ignore, but suddenly I was receiving the same words as a text message. Smile. 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 Dude, your phone is blowing up, Lucas said. When did you become so popular? It's just spam. I held the phone in his face, showing the last ten texts all with the same message. Why don't you click it? Haley chimed in. Yes, Haley, very smart idea. Why don't I open this obscure link that will surely not give me a virus? She rolled her eyes. Well, how about calling that number then? It's not anonymous, Lucas said. I thought about it for a moment, and I would lie if I said I wasn't curious. Besides, whoever was behind this had somehow gotten hold of both my number and my mail address. I figured maybe I'd recognize their voice. The phone rang five times, and I thought about hanging up, but then I suddenly heard them speak. Smile. An old voice whispered. Smile, Alex. They added in a louder tone. I looked at my friend staring at me with big eyes. How did this person know my old name? I had changed it to Finn a while ago. Who the fuck are you? I shouted. I certainly didn't recognize this person, but the rusty voice sent shivers down my spine. The response was a laugh, followed by a short medley. Dun dun da da dun. No way, I whispered. Welcome to the game, Alex, and don't forget to smile, they said before hanging up. I tried calling again, but the number had been disconnected. For days, my friends and I tried to figure out more about this strange experience, but there was nothing we could find, having only the word smile as information. But as it turned out, we didn't need to look for it. They were already on their way to us. The three of us were sitting at a diner eating lunch when the strange man dressed in a purple jester suit walked inside. The second I heard him hum the melody, the hairs on my arms stood up. The man was wearing a mask on top of his normal face. A mask with a massive smile reaching from one ear to the other. There were a couple more people inside the diner, but nobody else seemed to pay attention to him. The jester made his way towards our table and dropped off a small purple package. Hey! 
Who are you? Lucas quickly got up from his chair. The jester raised his shoulders and took a bow before quickly disappearing outside. The package had a card attached to it with the words, Smile, as well as a message on the back. The most lovely hello to you, our friends and game pieces. We cordially invite you to join us on this wonderful adventure. There are many rewards to be won, much fun to be had, and many souls to be mushed. The three of you have been chosen as Team W. How brilliant. In this package, you will find everything you need for the adventure. You'll be looking for jesters, imposters, and even a princess. Thrilling, isn't it? May the game begin, adventurers. We exchanged a quick look before tearing up the package. Inside, we found a phone, a knife, and three masks that looked like the same as the mask of the jester. What the actual fuck? Haley muttered. Um, guys, check this out. Lucas had opened the phone from the package. Inside, there was an app called Contestants that had personal descriptions as well as pictures of what we assumed were other teams. Some people were smiling towards the camera and others were wearing masks with a fake smile. Round one, take a photo of your team. Reward, $100. The notification suddenly popped up and just a second later we were looking at our own faces filmed by the front camera of the phone. Guys, smile, Haley said, and while it felt extremely unsettling, I followed her command. Lucas, however, didn't change his serious expression one bit. Beautiful. Well, two out of three, but we'll get that fixed. Round one starts in a few hours. We didn't believe it at first, but Haley and I had both received the money. Of course, it was even stranger that they had our bank details. Everything about this game was deeply violating, but we had been sucked in. Not only did we need to find out more about what was going on, but parts of us were also excited about it. We hadn't been on an adventure for a long time, and at least this one paid well. Haley and Lucas decided to stay with me for the time being. We wanted to be together when we received the next assignment, and most of all we wanted to find out as much as we could about this game. Wasn't it strange that nobody paid attention to that weirdo in the diner? Haley asked back at home. Lucas was in the bathroom taking a shower. Yeah, it's uh, almost as if they knew what was going on. Like they purposely didn't look. I responded. And she nodded. We should go through the photos. Maybe we'll recognize someone. She said and opened the app. We swiped through dozens of photos and there was nobody in there I recognized in the slightest. Haley kept looking through the phone while I researched some more on my laptop. <laughs> Lucas is, uh, he's been gone pretty long. Do you think he fell asleep in there? I laughed. Um, Finn? They uploaded our photo. Haley's hand was shaking as she handed over the phone. There were the two of us smiling awkwardly towards the camera, but that wasn't the horrifying part. Lucas was sitting next to us wearing the mask. Do you remember him putting on the mask for the photo? She asked. No, he definitely didn't. Maybe they added it onto the photo. Yeah, but do you see that? She pointed towards the corner of the mask. It looked like there was blood dripping from it. The head was shopped into the rest, but it was Lucas's face underneath. The lighting was much darker, though. Lucas! I shouted toward the bathroom, but he didn't answer. Your friend broke the rule and had to pay. Finally, he opened the door. His eyes looked empty and red. In his hand, he held the knife from the package. On the corner of his mouth were deep cuts on each side. I uh, had to do it, he whispered. They know every everything. My past, my family, my home. home. Shit, man, we, we need to get you to the doctor. Lucas shook his head. I, I have a feeling we'd be breaking a rule. I, I can't break another one. How do you know you broke one? Haley asked as she got a towel for Lucas's bloody mouth. They, they sent me my punishment. 
He wouldn't show us exactly what the text said and stayed quiet for most of the evening. But I knew my friend wouldn't mutilate himself like that for no reason. He had a reason, just like the rest of us. This game had sucked us in and there was no going back now. Round 2. Find the Jester. Reward $100 for a photo. $1,000 for an ear. $100,000 for his life. An ear? His life? Do they want us to kill him? Haley shrieked. I mean, taking a photo should be enough, right? Sounds like we can choose. How are we even supposed to find him? Lucas asked. He looked really messed up with those cuts in his mouth, but somehow he seemed even more sure that he wanted to continue. Not that we actually had a choice at this point. Um, guys, do you see that? Haley pointed her finger towards my living room window. There was someone standing right outside of it. I recognized the tips of his jester hat first. And then my eyes went to that creepy smile. He just stood there looking at us with his head slightly tilted and then he started waving. Before we could process what was going on, let alone take a photo, he grabbed something out of his pocket, threw it against the glass and ran off. As the initial shock settled, we got up and ran towards the window, but he had already disappeared into the darkness of the night. There was a stain on the glass from whatever he had thrown. Haley opened the window and started climbing out. Living on the ground floor felt like both handy and horrifying at that moment. This creep had gotten dangerously close and worst of all, they knew where I lived. I sighed and followed Haley outside. Fuck, fuck, why didn't we take the damn picture? Lucas asked. Check this out! He left us a map! I said. It was lying there on the ground behind the window, with a little ribbon around it. Um, that's not what he threw against the glass, though. Haley said as she pointed the torch of her phone towards something slimy between the grass. A bloody cut off ear? That's where we stood, sucked into the smile game, not knowing at all what our next steps were supposed to be. Did the jester give us his ear so we wouldn't take his life? Or was this a trick to make us break a rule? If you hear about a game called Smile, don't play it. Run as fast as you can. But I guess if you heard about it, it's already too late. Just remember this one thing. For now, don't forget to smile. The first round of the game left my friends with a nasty scar. The second round had given us an ear that was cut right off of someone's head, and the worst part was that the round wasn't even over yet. Smile was not a game with no rules. The rules were strict, and the punishment was hard. We simply had to figure out how to play it. The ear that we found lying on the ground next to my window was now safely placed inside a lunchbox that we put in the freezer. What, what else were we supposed to do with it? We hadn't slept at all, but we weren't sure either what to do next, and so we were still sitting in my apartment planning our next steps. The map that was left for us was just a regular map of this town, and no matter how much we looked, we couldn't find any clues on it. It was early morning by now, and the shimmer of sunlight coming in through the window gave me a feeling of hope. At least until I saw the blood stain that the jester left on the glass last night. We have the damn ear! Let's just send them a picture and be done with it! Lucas mumbled. Maybe you shouldn't talk that much, Lucas. Uh, you'll get terrible scars. He rolled his eyes and popped in another painkiller. This was the third pill already. Hey, uh, Haley, why don't you tell us why you knew that we had to smile in the photo? He responded. Our eyes went to Haley, who started fidgeting with her necklace. Why don't you show us the text they sent you, Lucas? We're a team after all, aren't we? Haley got up. Her avoidant expression turned sinister. Lucas stayed silent. Both of my friends seemed to have something to hide. It was bad enough that we couldn't trust the game we were so deep into. Questioning each other was only making matters worse. Before they decided to put me on blast next, I brought the topic back to the challenge. 
We still had a jester to catch. Okay, guys, calm down, yeah? Let's just figure out this damn game. They both nodded and Haley got up to say something. I looked through the other contestants on the app. I didn't recognize anyone, but what I noticed is how most are rather young teenagers. College students, though, there are also a few people who look significantly older. Of course, there are also the ones wearing masks. So, underneath the mask, they probably look like me, right? Nicely cut up, Lucas said as he moved his fingers to draw a smile in the air. I tried thinking back to yesterday when we were sitting inside the diner. The other people must have been accomplices of the game. Maybe they were contestants like us, and sitting in the diner was a task they received, or possibly maybe they were actors or game masters. Either way, it made no sense how they didn't respond at all to a man dressed in a purple jester costume singing and dancing through the diner. Not exactly something you'd witness every day. How far had this sick game spread already? Hey, check this out! Haley interrupted my thoughts. There's a list ranking the teams! I took the phone from her hands. We weren't quite at the bottom, but not high up either with our 100 points. There were even teams with points in negative numbers. 100 points? So I guess that's our $200 minus the 100 of Lucas? Did you check if they took any money off your bank account? He shook his head. Nope, nothing gone. Guess they counted my cuts as payment. Didn't even want to know what they did to the bottom players. Yeah, I whispered. Check this out, though. The team that is on number one has 50,000 points. So, that means they've probably been playing longer than us, right? Lucas said. Yeah, or they've done worse things, Haley chimed in. So, you think the Jester might be dead already? One might be. We don't know how many there are, she said with a dark expression in her eyes. Lucas kept scrolling through the phone of the game when suddenly something appeared to be changing. The numbers, they are getting lower. I jumped up to take a look and he was right. More and more teams were suddenly in the negatives. There was constant movement. Nobody seemed to be gaining points, however. I grabbed the phone off Lucas's hand to take a further look. One team had just fallen from 1,000 points to negative 99,000. What? How the hell did they just lose 100,000 points? I asked. What happened next was even weirder. The group photo of the group changed to a new one. It had a gray filter on top and people had deep cuts in the corner of their mouths, but opposed to the one of Lucas's, theirs were turned upside down to a frown. Did they lose? Haley carefully asked. Hell knows what this means, I responded. But whatever happens, we're not getting to that point. A few minutes passed and more teams lost points. None as many as Team S, though. Dun dun, da da dun. The noise was loud and shrill. I almost dropped the phone out of surprise. Lucas grabbed it from my hands and started grinding his teeth. I could feel the anger inside of him. You have been patient, congrats. Round two will officially begin in 1347 hours. We weren't supposed to start yet. Fuck, that's why the others were lynched. Lucas shouted and jumped up from his seat. Do you think so? I asked. Why else would they give us the info now? Shit, imagine that would have happened if we sent the photo of the ear. They probably would have ripped ours off too. That damn jester trying to trick us. Haley added. We still weren't sure what exactly our next steps were supposed to be, but if this was really true, then maybe we had almost passed the next task. All we needed to do was wait 12 hours and then send them the ear. As we didn't have any information on what else we could be doing, we decided to rest for now. None of us had slept at all and Lucas was still in pain. It didn't take much for Lucas to fall asleep. Haley and I tried researching some more until I couldn't keep my eyes open either. I was passed out for what felt like forever. When I finally got up, the other two were in the kitchen making dinner and chatting. It was nice hearing them be normal with each other again. We sat down to eat and trying to distract ourselves, but in reality, all we thought about was that timer. 
When it finally reached the last seconds, the three of us were curiously staring at the screen. The camera app opened. It was the back camera, but it had some strange filter on top. Are we supposed to t take a f another photo? Lucas asked. I shrugged. They haven't mentioned anything like that. All we had was an ear and a map. Had we finished the assignment without doing anything? Wait, I got an idea. Haley said as she opened the map we found yesterday. She held the phone above it and on the screen we started seeing signs. There were crosses that appeared on four different parts of the map. Three of them at random places around town, but one of them was far too familiar. It was my street. The cross marked my home. Round two has officially begun. Go catch a jester. Or parts of him. It's, uh, it's just showing my current location. Probably, right? <laughs> I nervously laughed. Must be. The other three places are all public places around town. I don't think so. I think they're all seeing it. Lucas interrupted her and pointed his finger to the window. Fuck me, not again. The first thing I saw was the creepy smile of the mask. The person wearing it had pressed their face right on the window and was scratching the glass with their nail. Behind him stood more masked strangers. The wrong smile burned its image in my eyes and my brain. The one in the front kept moving his head from left to right and he was humming something in low tones. Finn, did you lock the window when we got back inside yesterday? Haley whispered. I, I, I think so. The strangers put their palms against the glass and started pushing. I swear I thought I had locked the window last night, but it gave into their pushes and opened wide. Haley quickly grabbed the knife from the table, but the masked people didn't seem to care. They didn't even move, they just stood there and kept looking at us. They stayed right where they were, but we could clearly hear the tune they were humming. Lucas ran to the freezer, grabbed the box, and before any of us could act, he threw it over their heads. The smiling faces turned around, grabbed the ear, and ran off. I jumped towards the window and I locked it. The three of us were breathing heavily and for a moment none of us said a word. I had brought us into some massive danger. Why the, he why the hell did I not lock that window? Finally, Haley broke the silence. We had the ear. We could have sent the photo, but we were too slow, she whispered. At least we got rid of them. They might be others coming though. We should go to those other locations now and find our own jester, I said, trying to sound as confident as I could. There are exactly three locations left, all in completely different parts of town. I think the best we can do now is split up to maximize our chances, Haley said. I thought about it for a moment. It seemed risky to split up, but all places were very public and we had no idea if there was a time limit. Yeah, okay guys, but stay safe, no risk taking, okay? Yeah? Take a photo if you spot a jester and that's it, I said. Both agreed. The marks were near the town hall, a mall, and a bowling center. Haley took the car and drove to the bowling center, which was a 45 minute drive away. Lucas and I went to the subway where we each grabbed a different line. Haley had the game phone, and we agreed that the two morbid alternatives were no option. All we'd do would be to take a photo and send it to Haley right away just so she could upload it to the game. Sitting in the subway, I couldn't do much but wait and finally breathe. <sighs> it would take me about 30 minutes to the town hall. Smile? I heard a voice behind me. It was a guy about my age, I guess, with short brown hair. I had noticed him looking at me from the other seat before, but I hadn't noticed that he had gotten up. Now he was standing right next to me. Sorry, I didn't mean to freak you. I saw your photo in the game app. He whispered the last part as he took a seat in front of me. So, you're playing the game? I whispered. He seemed normal. Not crazy like the people in front of the window earlier. Yeah. Long story. I figured you're on the way to the town hall too. Uh-huh, 
Are you, you playing alone? He shook his head. My friends went to different places. I have no idea if this is breaking any rules, but we're freaking the hell out. This game is so confusing and horrible that... I, I don't know. Maybe we can help each other. I tried to smile. Sure. I don't know if I'll be much help, though. <laughs> yeah, me neither. He laughed. I'm Killian, by the way. Finn. Killian moved closer and started whispering. Do you think there are more players in here? I looked around the wagon. There was an older lady, two men in the back, and some kids a few seats behind us. Nobody I recognize. When we arrived at the station of the town hall, we were the only ones leaving the subway. The station was eerily empty and quiet. All right, let's go to the town hall, I guess. I doubt he'll be inside, but maybe on the place in front or... Killian grabbed my arm and pointed to the platform on the other side. I didn't expect him to see him at the station, but there was the jester. Possibly the same one I saw yesterday, but I couldn't be sure of that. He was on the very end, and in between us were the tracks. If we wanted to catch him, we had to run up all the stairs, get to the other side, and then run on the end of the platform, but... Poof, we didn't need to. All we needed was a photo. I got my phone, but before I could take a picture, I noticed someone behind the jester. It was Lucas. Black hair, gray shirt, denim jacket. It certainly looked like Lucas, but there was no way he could have made it here before me. He took the subway to the mall. I squinted my eyes to get a better look at his face, and I could swear I spotted the smile cuts next to his mouth. Lucas! I shouted. He looked at me, waved, and without hesitation he grabbed the jester and pushed him right on the tracks. Killian turned around and started running up the stairs. I followed him as fast as I could. There was no sign of Lucas anywhere. We got to the other side, ran down to the platform where the jester was. I thought Killian was about to take another photo, but instead he kneeled down. Grab my hand! He shouted towards the jester. I jumped down next to him and helped pull up the man. With all our strength, we got him back on the platform just before the subway made it to the station. The jester got up, pushed both of us to the ground with unbelievable strength and ran inside the subway. I tried getting my phone, but neither I nor Killian was quick enough to shoot a photo before he disappeared. That's when I heard my phone buzz. Haley. We got it. We won the round. What?